Welcome back to the shop everyone. Today's video takes place in week 44 of 2022, October 31st to November 6th. I want to start this video off by saying I hope you all had an amazing Christmas. Uh, you got to spend time with you know your family, your loved ones, and in preparation for New Year's Eve going on tonight, I want to wish you a happy new year. I was originally thinking about doing a uh, two week in one video, but figured since it's New Year's, you guys probably have things you need to do, places you gotta get to. I'll keep this one nice and short. So what we got going on right now is I am untaping the engine harness for inside the car. I believe I had some extra ignition wires that I don't actually need to use, so I'm just untaping them and I will then pull them out of the harness. So with those wires pulled out of the harness, I can start laying the engine harness back into the car now that everything is terminated as I want it to be. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm just starting to drape stuff up and I'm looking at the uh, Maven bulkhead connector and I'm like, well, shit, the plate has to come from the engine side and so I can't install this from the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go into the engine bay and I'm just going to start feeding all of the wires from the engine bay into the car. And then that way the plate will butt up against the firewall. When I looked at this after, I realized that there is a nut on the bulkhead connector that I likely could have undone. And then what I could have done is bolted the plate onto the firewall and then put the uh, connector back through the plate and threaded the nut on. But hindsight's 2020, and if I ever have to pull that harness out, I can just do that instead of going or pulling the entire wiring harness through the uh, firewall. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just struggling to get the nuts and bolts uh, through the plate. Uh, the fact that the bolts are on the engine compartment side and I'm trying to get nuts installed on the back side by myself, it can make things a little bit challenging. But again, I think if I took the connector out of the plate, I probably could have uh, just kind of looped my finger through the firewall to hold the nut and then tighten it down. But again, if I ever have to take this out, which I will, I'll try that and that should be a little bit easier. All right, so now that I got that firewall connector installed, I am going to start retaping the bundle and I'm just going to run it in the car back to where the Dominator sits.
Yeah, so I really thought that at the end of the last video that I had pulled all the wires out of that connector that I broke, uh, but apparently I hadn't, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, at this point in time, I had reached out to Jared, I wanna say his name is, over at Maven Speed, and I described to him what happened um, and that I was fairly confident that I broke it. And, you know, he, we worked it out uh, together and then I ended up buying a bunch more stuff. So I do at this point in time have a half, just, just the half shell replacement uh, on its way with um, a bunch of Deutsch, bunch of other Deutsch connectors. So it kind of worked out pretty well. And now is a common theme in building a car. I am going to pull things back off that I've already installed. This is always a fun time. You think you've got something done. It can sit in the car for a while. But no, no, you gotta take it all out. And I'm also going to take this plate out. So I'm doing a couple of uh, the screws at the top that I got. since everything's a little bit of a mess, we are going to do a bit of cleanup. grabbed a sheet of aluminum that looks strangely like the material I had used for that uh, electrical plate. Why am I lining that plate up and why am I taking measurements? What am I doing? Well, I'm building a new plate. The uh, original one just wasn't big enough. I didn't feel like I had enough room to install everything that I wanted on it. So I'm going to build a bigger one. And yeah, the GoPro uh, messed up and I lost, I don't know, probably 20 minutes worth of footage there's about, thereabouts. But in all the footage that was lost, I built a template. And as you can see, I've got the cardboard template there. It's looking pretty darn good. Minimal trimming was required. And so now I can transfer that template over to my my sheet of aluminum and get that ready to get cut out. But before I do that, I'm gonna have a bit of an intermission. Uh, I just got this package in from LMR, and what that is is a air compressor mount for uh, the accessory drive. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take you know five minutes and just kind of check and see how this installs in the front end. Um, one of the things that I realized is I don't know how it installs. Um, that was that was the long and short of what I got out of this, you know, brief exercise. That I have no idea how it's going to get installed. Now that we've had that intermission, we can start getting set up to cut out the new electrical mounting plates. Uh, that's the Pro Charger box you saw in the last video. I gotta figure something out to get all the parts on the car because I hate having that box just in the middle of the shop. It just gets in the way. 
Uh, so what I got there is my cordless grinder, and I've got an aluminum grinding disc. I'm gonna set up the plate, get it clamped down, and cut out my new uh, mount. As convenient as the cordless grinder or cutoff wheel is, the batteries that I have are only 1.3 amp hours and they just don't last long in that grinder. So I switched over to a corded one and I make much, much quicker work of the cuts. And yeah, I'm gonna see about getting some bigger batteries, but they're not exactly cheap. And you know, the smaller batteries in the drill are typically fine, but yeah, just in the bigger tools it, it doesn't work as well. So I'm just taking a uh, flap disc and just cleaning up the edges so there's not any burrs and not as sharp. All right, let's test fit this and see what we got. That is looking good so far. It's way bigger. So I'm gonna have a lot more space, a lot more real estate. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's get some stuff cleaned up. So I'm just roughly putting where it's gonna be and I'm gonna start laying out various components and just checking to see where I think it might fit. So that right there is my Leash Electronics Pro 8 relay board. So eight relays that can handle up to, I believe it's a 70 amp load. And each one of those wires on that um, pigtail, um, I shouldn't say each one, eight out of the 10 wires is a positive trigger wire and so i'm going to run each of those eight wires into that terminal block that's to the side of it so you can kind of see i'm starting to get my routing down and i'm going to have that beside the dominator and the fuse panel is going to go on the other side so that right there is a junction block so i can have one power input and then that will split off to multiple cables I was thinking about having this high, you know, the dominant low. You know, the aesthetics of the piece doesn't affect the performance. But when I look at something, I want to think, wow, that looks good. That was well done. And, you know, it's a personal thing for me to make it look good and not make it look like it was, you know, just half-assed and quickly thrown together.
So what I did is I calculated how long the right side was. I made that same mark on the left side and then I drew a straight line across and that way I can get everything mounted square to the top of this panel. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the dominator is equal distance from that line uh, on both sides and then with that centered I can have everything else kind of center off of it as well. Just going to mark the holes and then drill them out. So one thing that I got to keep in mind as I'm doing this is this is the back side of the plate so it's going to go towards the, the uh, hatch area. That's why I can put the uh, Pro 8 module so close to the dominator. It's because that dominator actually goes on the other side, on the front side. And part of the reason why I'm placing the Pro 8 module where I am is so that the wires for the dominator and the Pro 8 end up coming up on the same place on both sides so if you looked at it kind of from the top the wires would come up the same way um, again the wires don't care where they are this is just like something that I like doing is I like being very clean and consistent and making it look, look the same on both sides <music> Again, just making the uh, distance the same on both sides so that it's centered on the plate. Using a uh, 3 16th drill bit to drill out the holes, and that'll uh, allow my I think I got number 8s or number 10 stainless steel fasteners uh, just for mock-up. See, so yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where I want the placement of the terminal strip in relation to the relay module. I need to make it so that I can have the wires coming up off of the relay module go into the terminal strip bed and, and all make it all consistent and make it so that there's enough room to terminate the wires and make it look clean and all that good stuff.
now is I'm just making sure that I know uh, exactly which output uh, on, on the wiring goes to what relay. just need to tape these wires up and get them roughly into place you've seen me do this tons before so it should be uh, no nothing new here start to see how this is going to more or less look when it's done I think it looks pretty good I'm not too uh, unhappy with that all right so we jumped ahead a little bit because obviously you can see those wires are cut not sure if I just didn't start the recording or if the camera died and I didn't realize it but that's fine I didn't really do much um, so what, what I'm doing there is I'm laying out the fuse holder so that fuse holder is going to be power in from the battery and then power into the relays and I will also be able to tie down my fuse box to that relay or to the to that fuse I've grabbed some two gauge cable and I'm just trying to see if I'm going to be able to come off of the right side of that fuse and kind of get the wire bent nicely and like you know nice 90 degree bend make it look fluid make it look smooth into the relay power the two gauge was 
pretty big and pretty stiff, so I did eventually end up finding some four gauge wire that I had and just trying to make sure that I'm gonna be able to do this in a way that looks nice. So yeah, I think that I can get it looking nice. So yeah, I'm just gonna mount the fuse box here or the, the fuse, I should say. It's not a fuse box, it's not a fuse block. It's just a single fuse that's gonna go in there. Yeah, so now that I've got this tied down, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of thinking and getting inside my own head and trying to figure out what I'm going to do and really just wasting a lot of time trying to plan in my head things and how I want them to look. a whole pile of time trying to figure out how I'm going to get stuff mounted without getting anything done. I've decided to move on to figuring out wire for wiring for specific components and thinking that might actually help me in how I decide to run things. 
I know that there's going to be inputs and outputs going off of the ECU. I know I need to run ignition power into it to tell it when to turn on. Um, I know I'm going to have stuff like the AC fan clutch, the line lock outputs. Um, I think I know that at this point. I might not know at this point. That might come later. But I'm just trying to wire and figure out where things need to get power on paper. So that way it's a little bit more concrete than just being in my head. Folks, I know it's New Year's Eve and you've probably got much better things to be doing. So there's going to be another video out tomorrow. Uh, but if you have stuck around this long, as always, I would like to thank you for viewing and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>